but we are Zooming tonight's meeting. Um, and the folks that are on Zoom, I can announce for them, who are here to watch and participate in watching only. We will not be taking comments or votes for folks that are on Zoom. You need to be in person. And um, to make motions and to actually vote, um, you need to be a village resident as well. So with those brief announcements, I'm Greg Camp. I'm your moderator, or at least for the moment. Um, and uh, so basically my job is to keep the peace <laughs> and to, uh, to call on people to make motions. We have Don Wheeler again being our scribe, our person that takes the notes and does multiple duties for our village and town. And we, uh, we love that dearly. But as I make the announcement every year, especially if we start panning through motions or having discussions, if you could, when you're making a motion, raise your hand, state your name, even if I know exactly who you are, so that when Don's over there looking down writing, he doesn't have to look up and so forth to make sure he's taken down the name of who makes the motion and the second. That's how we get articles on the floor and further things that, that might come up. If we are having discussion, both because of Zoom and because of everyone hearing you. So something other than motioning something onto the floor, we're going to ask you to move up to what, this podium in the middle because there's a microphone there that's going to help the folks on Zoom hear the meeting. Is everything working technology-wise? Yep. Uh, maybe do you want me to share my screen, please? Go ahead. Okay. All right. So the citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters in the village of Woodstock, Vermont County of Windsor, are hereby warned to meet at the town hall on the 19th of March, 2024 at 7 a.m. continuing until 7 p.m. for the purpose of transaction, transactioning during that time, voting by Australian ballot. That's the part that got done at seven o'clock and those results will be available momentarily. The citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters of the village of Woodstock County of Windsor, state of Vermont are hereby warned to meet at the Woodstock town hall said village on the 19th of March, 2024, 7.30-ish p.m., to act upon the following articles. The first article, Article 1, there are elections to go through, which I will go through momentarily, but I will temporarily turn the meeting over to our village trustee chair. Thanks. Uh, so the first article is where we elect a moderator. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, you've got it up there. Uh, so my name is Seton McElroy. I'm currently your village chair. Uh, after this meeting, we will have a reorganizational meeting where we are and vice chair. So at least for the next hour, I'm your chair. Um, and I'll let everybody else introduce themselves. Um, hi, I'm Brenda Blakeman, and I am also a village trustee. Hi, I'm Gabe DeLeon, and I'm a village trustee for the next uh, 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Kahn. Um, Currently vice chair of the trustees. I'm Bill Corson, village trustee, and I'm active about many things in town, including pickleball, which is very important. <laughs> very important. And this is Piper McElroy. She's not a trustee, but she's just taking notes for us today. <laughs> and a town manager. Eric Duffy. And Don Wheeler, who does all of the things. <laughs> Thank you, John. So our first article uh, is to elect village officers for the ensuing year as required by law. The first one is moderator for a one-year term. Is there a nomination for moderator? Nominate Greg Camp as moderator. Is there a I second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Back to you, Greg. Thank you very much. And thank you for the introductions. I'm getting all of it on screen. That's great. Um, second position is clerk for one year. I would accept a nomination for clerk. I nominate Don Wheeler. Don Wheeler. I second. Seconded. Seconded. All those in favor of electing Don Wheeler for another year as our clerk and scribes signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? You're elected again, Don. Thank you for your <laughs> service. Um, the next two are trustee terms. The first one is a three year term. They were both decided by Australian ballot. Um, during the day today, and we do have those results already. I believe I've got the three-year term. person who got that term is Frank Hornick. And then the two-year term is Jeffrey Kahn. They've got, are they switched? Other. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I right. got them the other way. Anyway, so that's just an announcement. So Jeff Kahn will be the three-year term, and Frank Hornick will be the two-year term. Is that correct? Okay. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, both of you. Thank you. And thank you for your service. 
Okay, Tre um, treasurer for a one-year term. I would listen for any nominations for treasurer. The current treasurer, Charles Aguero is going to be here, but he said he would welcome to be treasurer in the future if he's nominated. Yeah, I nominate Charles Degner. I second. Second. Any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor for Charlie Degner for being treasurer for another year for the village of Woodstock, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? He gets another term. Um, the last one for this uh, Article 1 is trustee of public funds, and it's a one-year term currently held by Jill, da Jill Davies. Excuse me. Um, Nominate Jill Davies. Second. Second. Anyone else? Nominations? Okay. Closed. All those in favor of Jill Davies being trustee of public funds, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Again, thank you for your service, all of you. Um, very important for what you do. <laughs> we'll move on to Article 2, which I'll look a motion for when I'm done, um, to fix the annual compensation for the elected village officers, moderator, $50 per meeting, treasurer, $1,500 per year, clerk, $400 per year, trustees, $750 per year. What say you? Oh, you got that done. Okay, second. Henry Boyd, second. Thank the two of you. Um, any discussion on the article? Okay. All those in favor of Article Two as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We have it. Thank you. It's always nice to move through the first of them quickly. Article Three: to See if the village will vote to collect village general taxes on real estate and other taxes levied through the treasurer under the provisions of Title 32 VSA Chapter 133 and fix the date of payment as November 1st, 2024 and May 2nd, 2025 and require payment to be received by the town office by close of business on those dates. Thank you, Jill. Do I have a second? Anyone want a second Article 3? Second. Brenda, second. Got it, Brenda, is that who it is? Okay, up with us, Don, all right. Any discussion on Article 3? All those in favor of Article 3 as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Article 3 passes. Article 4, to see if the village will vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the Board of Trustees to borrow money, if necessary, in anticipation of taxes for fiscal year 2024-25 to defray current expenses and debt of the village. Anyone want to move Article 4? Yeah, right. I'll move that up. Welcome, Norm. A we have second. a second. Brenda? Good. Discussion on Article 4? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And it passes. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Article 5, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $1,543,736.16 and to raise by taxation the sum of $677,480.07 to pay the current expenses and debt of the village. And that breaks down, and I think we're going to go over some stuff in a moment, to general government, 296,321.40, boards and agencies, 123,321.20, village highway, 46,000, village parks, 1,700, village police, 1,056,559.56, trustees, contingency of $13,844 for a total budget of $1,543,736.16. Do I have a motion to put this article on the floor, Article 5 as presented? Okay. So moved. Seconded? Is that you, Carol? Seconded? Okay. I thought you raised your hand. Carol Washington. Yep. Kind of. Yep. Okay. All those in favor of, uh, well, 
I'm sorry. Explanation first. I know it's about to, to put it on the floor. It's on the floor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I think we're now going to have some explanation and questions and discussion. Um, yeah, there's two things. Um, one thing I do want to bring up. Um, it looks like the article six, seven, and eight are also included on this budget. Um, okay. So we may have to amend it uh, by 3,800 less, uh, or we'll double count it. Okay. So does that mean we're going to skip? So six, seven, and eight are actually included in the budget? Yes, as presented right now. That uh, makes sense to everybody? So you so look, look, look at page one uh, on the grants trust, um, the 400 for audit expense, 400 for trustees uh, right. funds, and student decorations uh, sitting right there. Um, so, this, so these items are in this article already? Yes. So I think we'd want it first. Yes. yes. Can we just vote for uh, there's not, but then we'd want to vote, not vote for Article 6, 7, 8. Right? I, I think it's friendly amendment to make, which is this. I would, uh, friendly amendment to be uh, vote Article 8, uh, reduced by the amount of Article 6, 7, and 8, uh, and proceed on that basis. So we would then go back and do 6, 7, and 8 separately? That's that, that, that the amendment I had. Anyone second that amendment? All those in favor of keeping Article 6, 7, and 8 out of the discussion and voting of Article 5 and then moving to those separately? And adjusting the amount accordingly. Cor correct. And adjusting Article 5 accordingly. So it can be done either way, but it's uh, put that. Um, Oliver. Oliver Goodenough. Sorry. Clarification: Article five, correct. So it will still get discussed. It's just a matter of do we discuss it all as one and skip the three, or do we? So the amendment is on the floor. It's been seconded. Any other discussion about the amendment? All those in favor. And so, if you're in favor of this, we're just going to take the thirty-eight hundred dollars out of this current discussion of Article five. And we will discuss them separately in Article 6, 7, and 8. That's what you're voting on. We need to specify which components of Article 5. Uh, uh, they're, they're listed. Yeah, I know, but which one? 3,800. You didn't do that. Right. Uh, the the $3,800 listed in 3,000 in Article 6. No. Okay. General, general government. General, general government. Right? Yes. Okay, that's great. Good question. Any other questions or? Okay. All those in. I'm oh, sorry. Yep, it was an error as we put together the budget. Um, after we have this budget, we add the special articles before we do a tax rate. So this is a carryover from the previous year. It should not be included until after the citizens vote on Article 6, 7, 8. Thanks. Good question. Any other discussion or questions? Okay, so we're voting on the amendment, which is going to separate out these funds so that we can then carry on with Article 6, 7, and 8 separately in the discussion, not included in the discussion on Article 5, correct? All those in favor of that amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. One no, and the ayes have it. So we will carry and we will go back to the discussion of Article 5, which is still on the floor, okay, with everything sure. except for the three items in 6, 7, and 8. General uh, government. Yeah, general government will be uh, 292, 521, 40. 292. 521.40. Yeah. Everybody have that? Okay, so after that detour, um, <laughs> this uh, process started back in um, actually September with a joint meeting between with the select board and the trustees um, and department heads and myself, um, kind of going over their goals for the year, uh, what, the, what they want the budget to be, 
Um, they then submitted those budgets to myself and the finance department in November. Uh, we asked them to give us their kind of uh, wish list, so we had a sense of what they actually wanted in the department. Uh, then by individual meetings with department heads, myself and the finance team slowly cut the budget to try to come up with a budget that fit the current services that the village needs, while also uh, recognizing an undue burden on tax rate on the citizens. Um, that budget was then discussed with the trustees in numerous public meetings, uh, individual trustees meetings, and then joint meetings with the select board, uh, and it was approved in December uh, by a vote of the trustees. Uh, it is a 5.39% increase from the budget from last year, uh, which results in about a 6.75 tax increase, uh, which is about $226 per $100,000 uh, household value on your home. Uh, this budget um, has almost nothing in it from last year. Uh, it is a very tight budget. It's based, based on past years of operating expenses. <laughs> Uh, really no new things in there that are not contractual. Uh, the two big drivers are salaries and benefits. Um, as everyone knows, benefits are constantly going up. Um, the salaries are contractual based on union contracts or contracts department heads have with um, the trustees and or the select board. Um, so when we look at this budget, there is very little wiggle room in it. Um, I've been saying this publicly since I came here. Um, I believe the budget in FY24 and the budget FY25 is not the budget we need um, going forward. I believe we need a, a larger budget to provide more services, more staffing, uh, allow us to be more effective by having more software internally. Um, however, myself, the trustees, the finance departments, we're also aware of um, trying to keep taxes as low as possible to keep people wanting to live in Woodstock and have a community where people can move here and live here successfully and not just second homeowners. Uh, so that's kind of the compromise we came to with this budget this year. Um, as we talked about a little bit already, uh, this is a breakdown uh, based on uh, the different departments in the village. I apologize for the formatting. Um, the big thing we want to talk about every year is the police budget. Uh, the police budget is a large driver in the village uh, budget itself. Um, the police department provides 24 hour, seven days a week coverage in the village. Um, the budget's just over a million dollars. Uh, they bring in, uh, bring in about a quarter million dollars in revenue from parking tickets, parking, uh, and fines. Uh, they also bring in another $450,000 from their contract with the town, uh, which means the taxes the village pays for 24 hour, seven day a week coverage is about $330,000 a year. Uh, so just to make that clear that it's a large number, but the actual tax Im impact is actually very low uh, in comparison. Um, with that said, as we go forward, um, after this budget is hopefully approved, uh, we're looking at trying to create budgets that actually reflect what we need and uh, what department heads need, um, and also create an updated capital plan so we can actually use our budget to tell a story of what we want to do going forward in the future. And instead of just trying to get a budget to get passed and keep services going, we really want to ask the question, where is what's that going to be in the next five, 10 years? And how are our budgets going to help us get there? Um, so putting a capital plan together along with uh, budgets that really show what we need is a goal we have for the next few years. Uh, since I've been here, we are looking at new software uh, that would help us increase efficiency, lower cost, and make the government more transparent. Uh, what we have now um, is a very low-fi version of software. Uh, it takes up a lot of time. Uh, the reports it provides are not that in-depth. Um, the issue we have is the expenses of it is very low. So to upgrade is a very high expense, um, but we're gonna look at ways to try to minimize that expense and find, find ways to bring new software in to the town and be able to kind of help us be more efficient and more transparent uh, so the residents know what we're doing. Um, again, a budget that kind of achieves the goals while also mindful of the infrastructure expenses that we know are coming down the road. Um, there was a school bond vote just a few weeks ago. Um, there's going to be a bond vote for a main wastewater plant uh, coming up. Uh, there's also conversations going on whether the town should or should not acquire the aqueduct company. Um, there's town hall issues that need to be solved. There are a lot of infra infrastructure projects in Woodstock that we need to look at in the near future. So we want to create a budget that will help us provide the best services, but at the same time understand that we can't just raise taxes 
to provide services, knowing that we also have to have these infrastructure projects that need to be funded in the near future. Um, another one is trying to create a budget that's easily understood by everyone. Municipal government budgets are interesting to say the least, um, and try and create a way so the average person can look at one and understand where the tax dollars are going, how it's being spent, um, and then ask intelligent questions on it to make sure we're doing the best thing we can do. Um, so some of that is revamping how we do the budget. Some of it is uh, showing how the budget looks. And another one is talking about the budget as much as we can so people come to meetings, understand what's in the budget and how the budget works. So again, then you can look at the budget yourself and ask questions, offer suggestions, and kind of help us have the best budget possible. Um, finally, there's going to be joint meetings the next two months uh, with the trustees and the select board. And in those meetings, the uh, trustees are going to come up with goals for themselves, um, goals for the department heads, and then goals for uh, any commission or committee that reports to the trustees or the select board. And then these goals are going to help shape how we create budgets going forward and how the actual municipality is going to function going forward based on those goals. Um, so I encourage everyone to attend those meetings. Um, let us know how you want us to function and then what you want the goals to be for the municipality going forward. And that's my spiel. Eric, could you mention the typo? That's oh, yes, sorry, yes. Uh -huh. um, so in, in your book, um, kind of going off um, question Wendy asked, um, on page 17, uh, the first kind of uh, chart uh, up top, we have the uh, department requested FY25, administrator recommended FY25, trustees recommended uh, 25. Um, then after that, instead of saying trustees, it said select board. That was just a carryover that the formula did not carry down to the select board as we printed this out. So we want to make clear that all these numbers, all this budget is the trustees recommended budget, not the select board. Um, so you just know that it is the trustees who approved this budget back in December. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yep. Other questions or discussions on Article 5, which is most of the budget? Well, the whole budget except for those three items. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and if you, okay. if you don't mind speaking in the middle there so we can get the Zoom folks. Yeah. This is a very scary podium. Yeah. It looks like a shipping container. It's nicer than mine. <laughs> uh, my name is Roger Logan. I live in Woodstock Village. Um, this is probably a little more of a housekeeping thing. Um, I would find it useful if in the, the, the detailed budget, if we also had the revenue, because um, I know you've definitely got the revenue as, a, as a, a big piece, but I'd like to look at it a little in a little more granular way. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, parking meters and how much are we making on parking meters or whatever else. And um, this is a suggestion, and I don't know if this is actually the right place to make it, but I think it would be interesting to start looking at including in the budget, if possible, or at least some of the planning documents for the budget, where consolidation might actually save money. Um, I have no idea if this would make any sense, but I note that we're spending $75,000 in the village and then considerably more in the town on insurance. And I don't know if any kind of consolidation of that might lower lower the um, the amounts. I, I really have no idea. So, yeah. you know, that's just a question whether or not there's any kind of efficiencies of scale in some of these. Yeah, so the insurance question, um, we have the same insurance for both town and the village. Uh, the a person whose salary is allocated between town and village will have the same insurance. It's just because the way we do the allocation, some of the uh, benefits is picked up by the trustees, some is picked up by the town, and some picked up by the sewer as well. So it's really one account, and you're just splitting it off yes. by the regular. Okay. Every payroll. So, um, but I think going forward, it might be interesting to look at any place where that kind of consolidation, that if it's not already consolidated, might save, even if it's a few bucks. Yeah, absolutely. add up. Um, okay, thank you. Thanks, Roger. Do we have another? Go ahead. Hi, Paige hey, Taylor. Um, I just wanted to know insurance-wise, because insurance is skyrocketing now, 
um, what the breakout is between employee and employer. Um, so right now, um, the municipality pays 93% on health insurance and the employee pays 7%. And I mean, the, for instance, the teachers within this district pay 20% and the state road crews also pay 20%. Have we ever considered kind of with what surrounding areas are doing, especially with our teachers within this district as well? Um, yeah, so I'll say two things on that. One is the finance committee uh, actually did some benchmarking for us this past year, and they came back with a recommendation. Um, I believe that the town should, it should be about a 90-10 split, I think was their recommendation. It might've been 91-9 split, I can't remember. Um, and that came up in the budget discussions uh, of changing that. Um, and it was my recommendation to both boards to keep the benefits as it was. And the reason behind that is uh, the last five employees we've hired have come to us because of our benefits package. Um, knowing that we're not paying as much salaries as other places, uh, the benefits was a big driver for them to come here. And in a time when we're struggling to recruit employees to work here, and a time when it's very difficult to live in the area, uh, the benefits is one of the few things that encourages people to work for Woodstock. And I didn't want to take that away when we're struggling to fill, fill, fill part-time EMT positions. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't find a DPW position. We're struggling to find a part-time police positions. Um, so it's my recommendation to the board to not do it this year and maybe have a discussion for next year, depending on where we are uh, with the economy. Um, but that discussion did come up. Okay, thank you. Yep. Other questions or discussions on Article 5, the budget? All good? All good with the trustee? What? No? Mike, Carol, thank you. Uh, but under uh, village parks, I wanted to make an amendment to change that to $5,000 based on the report that we got from Don Wheeler. Is that where I do that, or? Which one do you want to make $5,000, sorry? The fertilization tree work? Yeah, but that's under village parks right here. So I will say there's also $15,000 on the trustees for the tree fund. Um, and there is also, there should be a capital, uh, and there's also $5,000 under Village Capital Reserve, the tree fund as well. Okay, so it's already moved. Yes. Okay. Good question. Yes, if you don't mind stepping up, that'd be great. Thank you. Wendy, Marin and Village. I didn't plan to ask this question, but it triggered um, previous questions comment just triggered the thought there that to your point parks has a lot of little spots throughout both the select boards and the trustees village budgets and in the future would it be smart to align those into one section for example poop bags um etc 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 as i know some of the highway apartment trash things like that fall in are part of our expenses for parks. So I feel like having a light item for parks with virtually nothing in it, it would make more sense to fill it out, just moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, kind of show how much we do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Other questions or comments? <laughs> Anything else from the board? You're good? Okay. I will entertain a vote. Now, again, we're voting on, <clears throat> excuse me, Article 5, less the $3,800, which appears the $300 at $3,000 in Article 6, the 400 in Article 7, and the 400 in Article 8. Correct? So that would be the only friendly amendment that those those items should not have been in there. To begin with. Is that the total number? Yeah, that's that's a new one for uh, right. Yep. So the new total number is 
$1,539,936.16. That's the new number of the total budget minus the 3,800. Clear on that, everyone? We got the typos all set? Okay, all those in favor of Article 5 as presented and friendly amended, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the article carries. Now we will move on to Article 6. See if the village will vote to raise and appropriate from taxes the sum of $3,000 for the purpose of village beautification projects and seasonal decorations. This money to be spent at the discretion of the board of the board of village trustees. I have a motion on Article 6. We have a second. Thank you. Okay. Discussion, comments, questions on Article 6. Bill? Um, yeah, uh, we spent it on Alexandria, and we spent it on, I believe, some hanging, part of the money for hanging baskets, and some lights. I believe is where it all went. I don't know if we did the lights, uh, but in the past, we've done, we've, we've done it for uh, the lights contributed towards that, as well as the hanging uh, plants, the baskets. Um, the EDC has picked up, I think that they, did, the, they did that this year. Okay. Other questions or comments on Article 6? All those in favor of Article, oh, no, sorry, go ahead. That's all right, oh, speak, well, speak up, please. Yep. Wendy Marinet, I was waiting for someone else to bring this forward. Um, the recent, at our your most recent trustee meeting, the EDC put a um, thought in front of the trustees, if I heard it right, that the trustee, the village budget, pick up more of these seasonal expenses from the EDC than they have been spending. That, did I hear that right? That's correct. So, yeah. Beginning beginning next year. Beginning. It's a, yeah. it's a statement. Yeah, beginning the, next the, year. Next yeah. I just wanted to put that in the context of this vote, that if we vote on the 3,000, we may be looking at spending more that the EDC didn't cover next year. But that, that's still a But we'll be fine for this open. budget. Yeah. Right. I'm just, I wanted to put the bigger picture context. Okay. So for the next budget, we would have to take into consideration yes, and yes. I guess in the form of another article uh, or just or increasing in, in or putting this article, in the budget. But this, is, this covers what their needs are for this for year. For this year. Right. Okay. Thanks. Makes sense? Yeah. Anyone else on Article 6? All those in favor of Article 6 as presented signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Article 6 carries. <laughs> Article 7, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of paying the trustee of public funds for services rendered and approve such expenditures from income of the trust funds. I have a motion on Article 7. So moved. Seton McElroy. Thank you, Seton. I second. Second. Brenda, got it. Hey, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? Uh, okay, Article 7, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of paying the trustee of public funds for services rendered and approve such expenditures from income of the trust funds. Thank you. Sure. So, Greg, you know, we have been blessed to have uh, Jill Davies been doing this job very well um, and saving us $400. <laughs> every year. So although this money is there, uh, Jill has uh, declined to accept it. And I uh, just wanted everyone to know that. Um, so that money gets left in the fund. Jill? Sorry, Jill. Any other So even though you're not going to accept it, are we still going to try and pass Article 7 so the funds are there if needed? Yes. And they Something say, we're able to give up the job and so forth. I mean, I've done that with other budgets and other people. Well, 
And if you don't spend spend the money, then it goes back into the budget, correct? Or stays in the trust fund. Stays the trust. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Other comments or questions on that? And thank you for your service, Jill. Okay. So all those in favor of Article 7 as presented, even though it may not be used, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 7 carries. Article 8, to see if the village will vote to appropriate the sum of $400 for the purpose of auditing public trust funds and approve such expenditures from the income of the trust fund. I have a motion for Article 8. So moved. Seaton Second. Seconded. Seconded by Jeff. Discussion or questions on Article 8? All those in favor of Article 8 as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 8 carries. Article 9 is to act on any other business that legally comes before the village meeting. Does anyone have? business to come before the meeting. And boy, if you don't mind stepping up. Okay. Uh, Marie Boyd, I'm a resident of High Street, and I would like to ask the board if you could please reconsider how you deal with Halloween. You know, it's early, but kind of putting that out there. Thank you. So not a, not a motion, but a comment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you don't mind coming up. This <laughs> Oh, yeah. Uh, Lisa Lawler. I'm also a resident of the village and I'm on Maple Street and it really needs to be considered. Um, people are paying a lot of money out of their own pockets to get candy. The crowd is enormous. People are we don't know most of the people and um, it gets pretty scary. I'm afraid someone's going to fall on my lawn. I'm afraid there's going to be something. That will happen that will change this town forever. Um, it's too many people. It's too crowded. So expand, um, open more streets, put together a process to raise money. I know people who pay six, sixty, seventy, eighty dollars extra for candy because the nobody collects candy anymore. So there's got to be a way to make this safer and more affordable for the people who like to do this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your comments. Any other comments or someone have a motion to come before the Oh, I'm sorry, Seaton. Um, I would just like to make a motion of appreciation for Gabe DeLeon. This is his last meeting as a village trustee. That's what you said last week. I didn't say that. <laughs> we'll he said it last week. It's a motion of official appreciation. So are they gonna have me here next time too? Or... <laughs> um, yeah. Gabe has been a fantastic member of the village trustees. He has been just invaluable with his business background and um, and just has become, I think, a great friend to all of us. I mean, me especially. Um, and I'm so thankful for his service. And we just got to a little a little thank you oh, thank for you. you and a little note of thanks from all of the trustees. They want to see the book. To say oh, yeah. the book. And you may say something. <laughs> Thank you for the book. The, uh, uh, history of Woodstock. History of Woodstock. Woodstock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm a history buff too. Uh, no, uh, thank you. It's been it's been my uh, privilege to to be able to serve on this board with the, this great group of people. Uh, I could say we don't always agree on everything, <laughs> but we we always try to land where. Uh, it's in the best interest of the village and the town uh, and all our decisions. Uh, it's been really rewarding and uh, very fulfilling. And I, I'm really happy to have served uh, on the board. Thank you. Thank you. Wendy Marin, I'm sorry, it sort of felt like nice closure, Gabe. That, that it can be. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I know, but sorry. Um, I, I just had one, uh, it's kind of a uh, suggestion, question, um, concern, all in one. And that is, it's about porta potties. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, we're spending money. <laughs> no, no, it's I, um, we're spending money because our our 
marketing and our 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 uh, invitation is to success is very successful. I won't about judge it, but there's something to me about porta potties in the village of Woodstock that goes against the grain. And we're not in a field. We're not. It's not a wedding. You know, out 20 miles out of town. We're in the village, and we're finding the need <clears throat> to bring in porta potties and pay for them. And I, my understanding is we're paying for them, or we have paid them either EDC or contingency. It wasn't a budgeted item. <clears throat> EDC paid? No. No, no, no paid. Paid. the village contingency paid. fund. So I, I guess this is an after effect budget question, but I, is it in the, since you're projecting bringing them back in the contingency fund again? the porta potty it's possible I, and certainly okay. when we get upset so point. but in the spirit of alternatives i mean i know bathrooms are an issue it's it's hard on businesses to have those negative signs etc cetera, etc cetera. and we've been down this road before when we developed the welcome center <clears throat> i'd like to put the idea out there that in this very building our beloved town hall we have public restrooms what if the trustees could look at what would it take right now to have them open during these pressurized times like it's not that far from the end of the green it's not that far from the saint james fair it needs some sort of supervision unlocking uh that just like the welcome center but i would like to propose that we consider this another the town hall is another welcome center of a certain nature it's a public building with restrooms and put that in our thinking cap as we move forward when we get to the conversations about town hall mm -hmm. that we see the value in improving uh availability you know access publicity and um <clears throat> scale i guess scale of our public restrooms in this building to offset any future porta potty situations that's my suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Right. Any other motions, comments, or business to come before the floor? No? I can entertain a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I second. Second. All those in favor of adjournment? Uh, against? We are officially adjourned. Thank you for participating tonight. It's feel nice to see a good crowd. There's one more meeting coming up. Yeah, feel free to stay. Feel and free to talk to yourself too. Oh yes, you had a reorganization meeting. Stay and have stay and have a party fun.